Welcome to SpectacularOnlineSecrets.com. Spectacular Online Secrets. The Internet's first audiovisual presentation of online Internet marketing secrets. With your hosts, Pat and Lorna Shanks and Alex Mondosian. Question four. How do I find my voice as a teacher or trainer? How do I find my voice as a teacher or trainer? A voice in this context means your area of expertise or, or what you're going to be defined as, your voice. How do I find my voice? Okay? The answer, put yourself through a four-part exercise, and here it is. What am I good at? What do others say I'm good at? What are three things that others say I'm good at and I know that I'm good at that I'm most passionate about? And fourth, what's the one thing that others say I'm good at, that I know I'm good at, that I'm passionate about, that I can make my first dollar on first? Okay, let me go through this four-part exercise slowly. If you want to find your voice and you have no idea what your voice is, as a teacher, a trainer, as a marketing professional, heck, even as a human being, ask yourself this question and on, on an 8.5-inch by 11-inch sheet of paper, Write down for the next week, for the next seven days, what you're good at. Okay, so you can say, I'm a great teacher, or I'm a great consultant, or I'm a great father. You follow what I'm saying? I'm a great home buyer. Whatever you think you're really good at, or great at, really good to me means great. Something you're great at, not just good, really good. I'm a great reader. I read fast. I'm a great, I have a great voice. Physical voice, as in my voice resonates. I could do voiceovers. Okay? So ask yourself, what am I really good at? And write those things, hopefully 40 of them, on a sheet of paper, 8.5 by 11 inches. Okay? Like a regular sheet of paper with three holes down the side. All right, next. Second phase, second step. The four-part exercise, the second part, is that, and this is the fun part. Go to your friends, go to your colleagues. Go to an ex-spouse if you have one. They will give you the truth. Family members aren't always the best, but you can go to them. Go to competitors. Go to employees that work for you. Go to vendors. Go to anyone who you think will give you the truth and ask them, say, what am I really good at? What am I great at based on your observations? Give me a few things that I'm really, really good at or just great at. And then write down as they're telling you in front of them. I have found that when you write in front of them, in other words, W-R-I-T-E, write in front of them, they will give you more answers. So write down in front of them what they're telling you and shoot for two to three answers. If you're not getting two to three answers, then it's not someone who knows you, okay? And you can also ask them just for fun, but ask them this question second. It's not part of the four-part exercise. Ask them, what am I not good at? <laughs> <laughs> and then sometimes they'll tell you what you're really good at once they know what not what you're not good at. It's a really cool exercise to do. Ask people Socratically, like Socrates, what you're really good at or great at, and write that down on a separate sheet of paper. All right, so that's part two. This is part two in the four-part exercise of finding your voice as a teacher, trainer, or as a human being. Okay? So you have one sheet of paper after a full week, of you writing down, doing some self-study, self-evaluation, and asking yourself, what am I really good at? What am I great at? And writing it down. Okay? And then you go to friends, colleagues, ex-friends, ex-colleagues, ex-husbands or wives, family members that you don't specifically like, or maybe employees, people you like and don't like, as long as they'll talk to you. The people you don't like typically are the ones that will give you the truth. And ask them, hey, what am I really good at? What am I great at based on your experience, based on your observations, you ask them? Not what they think, but what they've seen. What am I really, really great at? And that's the question I ask. And then start writing and have at least 40 answers there. Now, you've completed the two parts. The first part is 40-plus answers. Hopefully, you have over 100 of what you think you're good at and feel you're good at and what you've observed yourself to be really great at. And then another list of what others feel that you're really great at. So the exercise is half done after a week. Do this because I've seen 
seven-day workshops focusing on this. I'm going to give you this in less than 300 seconds, in less than five minutes. It's so powerful. Number three, the third step, is to look at both lists, what you feel you're really good at and what others have felt you're really good at, that they've told you, and you look at three things, three items that overlap. You will find more than three. But find three things that are very similar. Let's say someone said, you're a great teacher, and you feel, I'm a great teacher. Let's say that uh, someone says, you're really good with numbers, and you feel you're really good with numbers. Okay? Those are called overlapping activities. Those are what you do. Not why you do it, now, not how you do it. They're, they are just the what. That's what takes up your time. The what. Not the how, not the why, but the what. I hope that's clear. So you take the what on both lists, and you look at three. How many? Three. Three overlapping activities that you are most passionate about. If you have a dozen overlapping activities, don't pick all dozen. Pick three that you are most passionate about. What is passion? Passion is you would do that even if it were free. Even if you made no money from it, you would do it just for the love of doing it. I would listen to music if I didn't make any money from it. And you know what? I don't make any money from listening to music, and I do it anyway. I would watch the game of squash, which I enjoy playing, for free, because I do that anyway. I would teach for free. Now, I get paid for teaching and training, but I love doing it. Can you tell? I love doing it so much. Because I love doing it, and the person I become while doing it loves it even more. It felt like an obsession for me. I love doing it so much, I would do it for free, and many times I do. So that's a passion. So if someone says teaching, and I put down teaching, which was on both of my lists, I wrote that down as one of the passion activities. So find three overlapping activities or things that you are most passionate about, which are the what's of what you do that you feel you're good at and others have said you're good at and have overlapped from both lists. Okay? That's step number three. That's part three of the exercise. Part four, this is critical. So let's see if you can vision this in your mind's eye. You have two sheets of paper, hopefully many more than two, but you have two sheets. One category is what you feel you're good at and you've listed a bunch. Another one is what others have thought you're good at, you've listed a bunch. You've taken three overlapping activities activities, things that you do, because you are most passionate about it, and you put that on a separate list, I recommend you put that on an index card. Put it on an index card. doesn't matter how big the index card is. It can be three by five, as far as, far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter, three inches by five inches. But just stick those three things on the index card. Now, those are the three things you're most passionate about that others have, have uh observed and have indicated to you that you're really good at them and you have observed and you've indicated to yourself that you're really good at them. Now what? You pick the one thing of the three that you're most passionate about and decide on that one thing, that one activity that you feel you can turn your first dollar on fastest. Focus on the one thing that you can turn pro with fastest because how many, how many dollars does it take to turn pro? One dollar. So you want to turn professional as fast as humanly possible from the three most passionate things that you've observed you're good at and others have observed you're good at, and that is your voice. Now, I have seen exercises that have lasted days and hours, but I've never seen one as easy as this, as these four steps. And these four steps have changed my life. Hopefully, they will change yours if you go through the process. Step one, what am I good at? Step two, what do other, thing, other people th say I'm really good at? Step three, what are the three overlapping activities I'm most passionate about that I feel I'm good at from my list and others feel I'm good at from their list? And then decide on the one thing from the three overlapping things on that index card that I'm most passionate about that I'll turn my first dollar over on fastest and turn pro on fastest. That is the four-step process to go through to find your voice as a teacher and trainer as a human being.
You've been listening to SpectacularOnlineSecrets.com. Spectacular Online Secrets. With your hosts, Pat and Lorna Shanks and Alex Mondosian. If you're a subscriber to the show, the next episode is coming soon. If you haven't yet subscribed and you would like to have our show delivered directly to you, search for Spectacular Online Secrets at iTunes or visit www.SpectacularOnlineSecrets.com. Hi, this is Pat and Lorna Shanks of SpectacularPresentations.com. You have been watching our Spectacular Online Secrets series. To access this episode's special offer, we invite you to visit www.2specialoffer.com. That's www.2specialoffer.com. We look forward to seeing you on our next Spectacular Online Secrets episode.